Hi guys, this is Luke and welcome to another tutorial on Django. In this one we are going to show you how to integrate Django with OpenCV. So this tutorial is based on two parts. The first one will take place in Jupyter Notebook where we are going to do some very basic stuff in OpenCV and then we are going to take this code and bring it into our Django project. So later when you would like to do your own project with the use of OpenCV, you will have the knowledge how to integrate these two. And before we jump into code, I just want to make a very short announcement that about two weeks ago, a Django genius uh, started his YouTube channel. His name is Daniel Fieldroy. You should definitely check his channel out if you want to yeah, master Django. So I highly recommend to take a look at his content. All right, guys, so let's get started with this tutorial. I already created a folder for our project on the desktop. I called it OpenCV Django, and inside I've put in a picture of my dog. So this is Goya, she's five years old. She's a Bernese mountain dog, and probably the most important member of our family. So today we are going to do some exercises on the picture of Goya. All right, so with that, with that being said, we can access this directory so I'm going to go to the terminal cd and I'm just going to drag and drop the folder press enter and now we can write a comment Jupyter notebook and over here in this folder let's create a new python3 notebook so we can begin with the imports we will need opencv so import cv2 and then maybe we will need NumPy. So I'm going to import NumPy SNP and also import mat, matplotlib pyplot splt. Shift enter to execute the comments above. And now we can read in the image of Goya. So in order to do that, I'm creating a variable called amg and let's assign to it cv2 im read and we need to provide the path to our image so in our case goya is in the same directory as this notebook so we just need to write down goya jpg because this is the name of the file and we can write down emg so over here we get an array and if you are wondering what this array consists of we can first of all check the type of this emg so let's type in type emg shift enter and as you can see we have a numpy array and now we can also write down emg shape so here what we have are the dimensions of this image we have the width we have the height and also we have the color channels so in this case we have uh, 10, uh, 1066 uh, pixels of width 1600 pixels of height and three color channels and the color channels are red green and blue so if something is uh, close to 255 it's more whitish on all three col color channels if something is closer to zero, it gets a little bit darker and all three color channels give us the black color. So we will discuss this in greater details once we get to the subject of convolutional neural networks. But for now, this is how actually the computer understands the images, not by the image itself, but by translating the image to a NumPy array and working on the pixels. So let's jump back into Jupyter Notebook and yeah, let's actually try to display the image. So what we can do is to uh, write down, refer to this image variable at the top and write down plt em show image. And now shift enter. And as you can see, 
we have Goya displayed. However, there are at least two issues. Uh, the first one is that Goya kind of looks like an alien on this picture. And the second one is that we would like to ha hide the axis over here and maybe this matplotlib object. So yeah, let's begin with the colors. The problem over here is that we have different order reading of color channels for OpenCV and matplotlib. So the OpenCV reads the color channels in the order blue, green, red, so BGR. And matplotlib expects a different order, the more classical order, RGB, so red, green, blue. If we look at rapidtables.com, here we have this classic order of red, green, blue. But in case of OpenCV, it's reversed. It's BGR, okay? So this is something that we need to uh, include in our processing. And to do this right, we can write another variable called normal and assign to it CV2 and then CVT color and pass in the image as well as CV2 and then color and indicate that we want BGR to be translated into RGB. Uh, All right. And now we can write down PLT EM show normal. Let's check it out. And as you can see, the colors have been fixed. So this is one thing that has been taken care of. And now let's get rid of those axes and this matplotlib object. So in order to do that, we are going to write a function and let's call it get image, which uh, will take in an image itself as well as CMAP with default value assigned to none. Uh, what we want to do is to write down PLT axis off and this will get rid of the problem of the axis. So let's do this. And below we would like to write down PLT EM show and pass in the image and the CMAP will be equal to the CMAP that we are passing over here. And finally, PLT show, and this will get rid of this uh, matplotlib object. So what we can do now is actually test this out. I'm going to copy this function, press shift enter, paste this function over here and pass in our EMG. So EMG, let's check it out and here is Goya but she is in the wrong colors and this is because we passed in EMG while we should pass in normal so shift enter again and there it is okay this is looking much much better all right so now it's time to apply our first filter so I'm just going to call it colorized and we are going to get this effect by applying a different color space. So instead of translating BGR to RGB, we are actually going to translate BGR to HSV. And we can create a variable called HSV. And this is going to be CV2 CVT color. And then pass in the image and CV2 color and then BGR to HSV and let's display the image so get image and let's pass in the HSV shift enter and this is our first effect the second one will be grayscale so this is also going to be pretty simple because we just need to define a new variable called gray and CV2 and then CVT color we pass in the image and instead of translating um, the, RG, the, the BGR to uh, RGB or HSV, we are going to use BGR to gray. And again, get image and um, we need to pass in the gray 
shift enter and we have some kind of an issue okay I made a typo sorry about that shift enter again and here is Goya however the colors are aren't that good they, they aren't gray so to have this effect let's uh, provide a C map gray and shift enter again and there it is and the next effect that we are going to apply is the blur effect so before we jump into code on this let's just talk very short shortly about the a kernel so a kernel is a matrix that is used to get effects like for example blurring or sharpening and you can see them being applied all the time in deep learning while creating convolutional neural networks and this is done for feature extraction so feature extraction is in shortens as the name suggests a technique for extracting the most important elements of the image itself we will talk about this more deeply while creating our own convolutional neural networks for now what we need to know that the greater size of a kernel the more blur effect we will get so at first let's take a more classical approach more easy approach where we are going to have a fixed kernel and I'm going to put in 25 by 25 and this is a kernel that we are going to apply on the image so what we need to do next is to set a variable and this is going to be cv2 and then blur and we want to blur the image of my dog and we want to apply this kernel that we set over here then what we want to do is to get get uh, the image and we need to pass in the blur so now if i type shift enter here is the image of Goya and I of course should use normal and this is looking now much much better um, the problem is that we might have images with different sizes so this kernel for some image some for some images might be a little bit too big for some images might be a little bit too small so what will happen if I would have a kernel with a size 2 by 2 let's press shift enter and you can hardly see a difference over here you actually can't see a difference at least I can't but if I put here 200 by 200 look how much blur effect do we have over here it's it's obviously too much so we need to uh, handle this problem by the image size we need to apply kernels by the image size and the first thing that i'm going to do is to get the width and height and this is going to be the normal image shape and we need to reduce it to two because we don't want to unpack the number of color channels we just want to know the width and the height so right now we can print out the width and print out the height let's press shift enter and here is the width and the height so this matches exactly the width and height from over here okay so now knowing the width and height we can actually take the width itself we will ignore the height for this example and we will check if the width is greater than for example 500 and if this is the case the kernel will be set to 50 by 50 in other case we are going to check if the width is greater than 200 but smaller or equal to 500 and if this is the case we will set the kernel to be equal 25 by 25 and in other cases let's just write a kernel will be set to 10 by 10 okay so right now if we delete this k from over here press shift enter 
we have a, an effect with a kernel 50 by 50 because the width in this case is greater than 500. All right, the next effect on the list is the binary effect and we can get it if we use our grayscaled image and set some kind of a threshold from which we will uh, set the vi values either to be equal 255 or to be shifted all the way down to zero. This way our image will consist of only the colors that are pure black or pure white. So first of all let me write down binary and then we will set we will unpack value and binary from cv2 trash threshold and we need to pass in the image very important to pass in our gray image so in gray scale and then we need to pass in the lower bound so in our case this will be 100 so uh, each pixel below 100 will be shifted to 0 and above 100 will be shifted to the higher bound which is 255 and then we need to pass in cv2 and trash binary all right we can write down get image so let's pass in binary and the C map should be equal to gray let's press shift enter and we have some problem trash threshold let me do this again threshold uh, uh, here's the issue here should be the H sorry about that one more time and there it is so as you can see we have a picture only in black and white so yeah we could play around a little bit with those boundaries set it for example to 200 and we would get an extremely dark image if we put here 20 it will be extremely light so I'm going to go back to 100 and let's leave it the way it is okay so the next effect will be the invert effect so if we look at this picture now wherever we see black we would like to see white and wherever we see white we would like to see black so let me write down invert and we can set an invert variable equal to cv2 bit wise not and pass in this uh, binary variable and we can simply write down uh, get image and pass in the invert with the c map is equal to gray shift enter and there it is so yeah i think we are done in the jupyter notebook now we can set up a django project and yeah we will apply all these filters over here uh, to django so let's grab a cup of coffee and yeah we will see each other in just a second all right guys welcome back so if you're still here this is where it's going to get pretty excited because we will show you how to integrate OpenCV with Django so what I'm going to do first is to deactivate Conda and I'm going to head over to the OpenCV Django where we keep our Jupyter notebook and the image of my dog in my case at least and right now we can create next to those files a virtual environment that we will call OpenCV NV or Django OpenCV NV call it whatever you want okay now we can go to this open cv directory open cv nv directory and we can activate the virtual environment source bin activate is a comment for this and now we can install packages starting from django
All right, we will also need matplotlib, so pip install matplotlib. And we will also need opencv, so pip install opencv python. I'm just going to copy it and paste it over here. All right, so now we can start a Django project, Django admin start project, and I'm going to call mine open cv proj and now we have the structure of our virtual environment directory that we have been include lib and open cv proj which i'm going to rename to source mv open cv proj src and if we access the src now we have a structure of manage py and open cv proj so a uh, manage py file is a file that helps us manage all the administrative tasks so yeah let's use it a couple of times python manage py start app and let's call the application uploads and now let's list out the elements so next to the manage py file and next to our main project folder we have an application folder called uploads and python manage py migrate and ls and now we have a sqlite database file next to our manage py file next to the project folder and next to the uploads and also let's run python manage py create super user and this will be for the logging in into the admin so let's provide the username the email is optional we need to set up a password and yeah now we can run python manage py run server and i'm just going to copy this link paste it over here and we have a confirmation that Django has been successfully installed. And if we write down dash admin, we can log into the admin. And this is the place where we will do image upload for this project. But first we need to jump into Visual Studio Code and do some work over there. So what I'm going to do is to quit the server from running you can do it by pressing Ctrl C and then I'm going to move up one directory and write down code space dot to open Visual Studio Code. All right. So I'm going to head over to SRC. Here is our main project folder. Here is our application folder. And I'm going to head over to OpenCV Proj, where we need to add some lines of codes to settings py and URLs py. So let's do the settings py first. Let's scroll all the way down. And yeah, we need to provide the media URL. And this is just going to be media. And we need to provide the media root. So to this place, we are going to upload all the images that we are going to test use in this project. So let's write OS path, join, and then base dir, which is basically our SRC folder. We want to put in the media folder, which we are going to create right now. So let's just save the settings py file and inside the src folder let's create a new one called media okay and now what we need to do is to include those media settings in the url patterns so let's jump into urls py and i'm going to do a couple of imports from django conf import settings and from django conf urls static import static 
Okay, let's write URL patterns and we want to extend them by static and over here we need to write down settings media URL so this is something that we set up just a second ago and document root will be set to settings media root all right so this should do it document root here was a typo sorry document root settings media root all right so now everything should be okay i'm going to save the urls py and we are going to jump into our uploads because inside the uploads we need to create a model so uh, over here let's define a new class called upload and this will inherit from models dot model and now we need to define the fields that we want to store in the database so I'm going to put an image and yeah we forgot to install one thing uh, mainly pillow because over here we are going to use an image field where the upload to will be set to of course media where's our media folder over here but inside the media we will have another folder called images so uh, all the uploaded images will be stored in in uh, this directory okay and the image itself will uh, store a value of a path to the image that has been uploaded over here okay so yeah let's jump into terminal and let's write pip install pillow okay so now we can go to the next field this is going to be the action and the action will indicate what kind of filter do we want to apply so this is going to be a models char field with the max length I'm just going to set it to 50 and we will have choices set to action choices so this is something that we need to define and we will do it above let's open up a tuple and inside this tuple we will have a few tuples that will have stored two values the first one is going to be the actual value stored in the database so we will begin with no filter and the second one will be the human readable name so i'm just going to uh, do all of this because we need to have all the filters that we defined in our jupyter notebook so i'm going to uh, speed things up All right, so I defined all the actions and yeah, now depending on what the action will be, we will simply apply a certain filter uh, that will transform our image. But first let's finish um, the class because we will add, also add two additional fields. The first one missing is the updated, so this will be a models date time field and this will be auto now is equal to true so whenever we update an image this value will change we will have the date and time of the last update and the created and this will be models date time fields auto now add is equal to true so this will give us the date and time of the creation of our object coming through this upload class okay let's also provide a string representation which takes in a self and let's return str self self id okay and now we will 
begin with the fun part because we will override the save method which takes in self arcs and keyword arcs and for now I'm just going to write down pass because we will create inside of this uploads application another file that we will call utils.py and over here in this utils.py we will have a helper function which will handle all the code that we already written in Jupyter Notebook. So for now I'm going to write down import cv2 and I'm also going to define the function. I'm going to call it get filtered image and it will take in an image itself and an action. So this is something that we will pass from the save method and for now I'm going to leave it as pass and I'm just going to jump back into the models and I'm going to import this function. So from utils import get filtered image. Okay, um, so yeah, maybe we can begin by opening an image and we can do it by, I'm just going to write a comment, open image and we can do it by defining a variable called pill emg and we are going to use pillow for that so we need to go to the top and from pill import image okay and now we can write down image and then open and we want to open self image Okay, so this is the first step. The next step will be to convert the image to an array and process it. Or convert the image to array and do some processing. So uh, we can do it by defining a new variable called, for example, CV image, and this will be np so we need to import numpy import numpy as np and this will be numpy and array and we are just passing this pill emg so this will convert the image to an um, numpy array and we will write down a new variable called image and set it to get filtered image and over here we are passing CV image and self action so we are deciding what action should it be for example grayscale then we are passing to this function an image and the action that we want to apply so in this case we want to apply the grayscale filter and going back to utils.py this function will have a filtered variable which will be returned depending on the action type, okay? So in the utils.py file, now that we are getting an image to this particular function, we can define it as emg and this will be cv2 cvt color and we want to pass in this image that we are receiving and write down cv2 color bgr to rgb okay so this is uh, the first thing that we need to do and then we are going to check if the action is equal to the first one on our list so no filter I'm going to copy this and put it over here and if this is the case what we want to do is to set the filtered so this variable that will be returned from this function we want to set filtered to be equal this image over here okay this is the first case scenario let's write an elif 
and in other case action will be equal to the next position on the list so it's colorized let's put it over here and in this case we want to set the filtered to be equal cv2 cvt color we are passing the emg from over here and we are converting we are translating colors from bgr to not rgb but hsv in this case okay so this is the second case scenario now let's do another elif and elif action is equal to the next position on the list and this is grayscale so let's put in grayscale and I'm just going to copy this it will be very similar but in this case the filter will be CV2 color image and BGR to not HSV but gray alright and let's do another elif and in this case action we are going to compare against the next position blurred all right and if this is the case then we need to get the width and height so it will be gotten from over here emg shape and we want to limit to two so we want to get the width and height itself we don't want to get the we don't want to unpack the color channels and we are going to compare if the width is greater than 500 the kernel will be set to 50 by 50 in other case we are going to check if the width is greater than 200 and width is smaller or equal 500 and if this is the case the kernel will be set to 25 by 25 and in other case scenario the kernel will be set to 10 by 10 okay and then we can set a variable called blur and this is going to be cv2 blur and we are going to pass in the emg and the kernel and the filtered we will set to cv2 cvt color blur and cv2 color bgr to rgb okay so this is another case scenario we can go back to the models and we have binary so let's copy binary and let's do another elif action equal to binary and if this is the case we want to go to grayscale copy this filtered put it over here just let's rename it to gray and um, let's write filtered is equal to cv2 threshold and then uh, let's pass in this gray the lower bound 100 the upper 255 we know this from the notebook jupyter notebook exercise and then let's write trash binary okay so this is for the binary and there's still one case scenario left where the action is equal to invert i think let's check it invert yes so um going back to utils invert and this is going to be pretty much similar i'm just going to copy everything from here put it over here but i'm going to change filtered to emg and the filtered is going to be cv2 
bit wise not and I'm going to pass in this EMG okay and then depending on the action we are going to do some image processing and we are going to return the filtered so yeah this is probably a ready function unless we did some mistakes but I'm going to save it and leave it as it is and then jump back into the models. So let's continue working on the save method. Um, what we need to do next is to convert this image back to pill. So we need to get the pill image uh, back. And I'm just going to write down convert back to pill image. Okay, and we can set EMPIL is equal to image and then from array and we can pass in this image that we are getting from this get filtered image function. So now we are uh, converting from array an image to a pill image. And then we need to work on the save. So we are going to set a buffer variable and first let's import um, bytes IO so we can do it in at the top import or from IO import bytes IO okay and we are going to assign this buffer to bytes IO next we will write down em pill save and we are going to pass in this buffer and the format let's set it to png so what's happening over here is that uh, in the buffer in this line of code we are creating a bytes buffer for the image that will be saved and here we are saving this image creating the image with the use of this bytes.io object as its file and in the line below we are going to retrieve the entire content of the file with a variable that we can de define as emg png and this is going to be just a buffer and then get value okay the next thing is to save the image so uh, let's write self image save and we want to provide first the name so i'm just going to put an str self image then we will need to import content file for uh, image png to be passed so at the very top we can write from django core uh, files and then base import content file and now we can use this content file this should be outside this comma and then content file and we want to pass in the emg png variable and here let's write save is equal to false because we don't want to save it over here this image we want to save it below with the use of super save and let's pass in the arcs and keyword arcs all right so this should hopefully do the trick mm. let's just uh, not forget to register this upload in the admin so let's jump to the admin py file and from dot models import upload and then we need to write down admin site register register this upload but also what we need to do is to go to the settings and add uploads to the installed app list uploads okay we can go ahead and save this and jump into the terminal currently we are in OpenCVNV we need to go to the SRC in order to uh, have access to the manage py file and python 
manage py make migrations okay python manage py migrate and python manage py run server so let's go to the admin let's hit refresh here is our uploads model so i'm going to add a file and i'm going to go to the desktop beyond nv uh, not beyond nv uh, yes beyond nv uh, opencv django sorry this is the folder and here is the image of goya i'm going to set colorized filter let's see if this works save and continue editing and as you can see it worked perfectly so i'm going to add another one this time i will do no filter save and continue editing and uh, over here we have an issue because we need to translate it to uh, the, the right colors so this is one thing that we need to correct uh, colorized we tested let's do grayscale and here is grayscale so this is working I'm going to uh, add another one and let's do the blur save and continue editing the blur works as well let's do the binary and there it is so this works as well and let's do the invert And this works perfectly, uh, yeah, as well. So what we need to do is to work on the no filter. So let's jump back in Visual Studio Code. Let's go to the utils py file. And over here, we set the filtered to be equal image. And here we are using BGR to RGB. So let's try to pass in this image that we are getting from over here instead of this image. Let's see if this will help. Let's save it. Let's um, add another one. Goya. No filter. And this is working. Okay. All right, guys, so I think this is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite a long one. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I think a lot of pretty cool content is coming up also uh, regarding uh, artificial intelligence with Django. So um, yeah, it should be quite fun and interesting. All right, so have a great day and hopefully see you soon. Take care and bye-bye.